In the holy name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. When Adam and Noah and the rest, they failed God. Noah became drunken and drunkenness is against God. God decided to pick a man called Abraham and use him to create a nation through which his laws, his laws shall rule over the world. So through Abraham, Israel came as a selected nation on earth and God decided to give Israel laws and told the whole world to look upon God's leadership on Israel. So the Lord God gave to Moses to govern Israel as a nation in the wilderness before they entered into the Canaanite, became Canaan, became the law that every Christian brother, Christian sister, who is a seed of Abraham must follow. Thanks be to God, those laws were written in scriptures. Amen. So in every country in the world till 2024, they all know about the Ten Commandments because God gave it to Moses to give it to Israel and pointed all nations to look at Israel and worship him. The laws that God gave through Moses to Israel govern every man who has given his or her life to Christ. Apostle Paul made it known to we, the Gentiles, who are not physical descendants of Israel, to say that the moment you give your life to Christ, you become part of the tree, the olive tree of Israel. So the Lord pulled one branch out of Israel and took us, the Gentiles, into the tree. So he said the fatness and the nutrients that pass through the root of the tree also enter into the branches, meaning that whatever God is, whatever God laws that flows through Israel, the tree, reaches with the Gentile, the branch also. So we cannot say that we are not Israelite. Therefore, the laws of Israel does not govern us. We are Christians and the law that God gave to Israel covers our lives. And that word was given to Israel before it came to the Gentile dispensation. So with that in your mind, we go to the question of one of you who has, is asking the question concerning marital life. I have been married for the past eight years. As the man of the house, I know it is my duty to provide so over the eight, over the years, have religiously, religiously done these. From the paying of rent through providing housekeeping money to the payment of school fees, for our only child. Three months ago, I was laid off at work and my financial situation is currently not good. Fortunately, my wife landed her first job with an oil company in the last four months and the, her salary is very good. But she said it is not her duty to support the house in any way. But otherwise, the woman doesn't want to help the husband to take care of the house. So this is the situation on the ground and the law that God gave to the general well-being of man concerning help depends and falls upon every Christian believer in the world. In Exodus chapter 23, verse 5, we are reading the Amplified Version. 
the Lord told Moses that if I am an ordinary person walking within the land of Israel and I see a donkey of one who I hate lying helpless under his load. In other words, the donkey in those days were called like the cargo vehicles. And when the load is very heavy on the donkey, the donkey might fall and the animal can die. So if I am walking around and I see a man who I hate and his donkey has got load upon it and the donkey is falling apart, the man alone cannot lift the burden of the donkey even though I hate the person I must go straight and help him to lift the burden of the donkey so that the animal will leave. Assistance in time of trouble, especially even to the person that you hate. The person that you hate is in trouble. God said you should not pass the person by. Even though you hate him, so long as you saw him, you saw the donkey, you saw the load, and you saw the problem, forget about your hatred and walk straight and help him to remove the burden and make sure the animal is safe. The donkey at that time is a livelihood. Some people, they have three, four, five. They carry load from community one to Ashima, from Ashima to community one. So when they reach the middle and they are not able to fulfill the end of the journey, they don't get their reward, the payment. So it is a livelihood matter that we are talking about here. It's a livelihood matter. My donkey is on load. I've gone to cut load from community one, coming to community 11. But in the middle, the donkey cannot move again. If I don't bring my goods to come to 11, the owner will not pay me. And God is telling Moses that when you see the man you hate going through such situation that the donkey is having problem and that he cannot reach his destination and you must relieve the donkey of the bed so that the donkey can be healthy and you find another way to bring your goods to the, the, to the, to the destination, you will get reward. So even if you hate the man, you must make sure you help him. Amen. So the law of God binds every human being, especially Christians, to extend help to all men. All men. In 3 John chapter 1, we are reading from the 5th verse. John was recommending and commending the Christians at that time. Beloved, Thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and strangers. So people will come from Kaswa and come into the church community. They are within the church. Brethren, brothers and sisters. And you see brothers and sisters helping themselves until the stranger also within the church some touches the person so you continue on to verse 6 and you continue to explain which have borne witnesses the strangers who came to the church community left back and they went out with witnessing of the good help the charity before the church. They went to other churches and explained. When we went to the present field community 11, the brethren helped us. They gave us this. They gave us this. So according to John, the, the strangers have come and then they are telling it before the church of whom if thou bring forward in their journey after a godly sort, thou doest well. The one whose server will come and will need help to travel along. Not that he's staying with you, but he's passing through help the person to pass through if he doesn't have transport and you have transport help him and the work that you are doing many churches have heard it because they have seen that you are bearing charity helping them to fulfill their role within the brethren within the church community 
So in verse 7, we went go on and said, Because that for his sakes, for his name's sake, they went forth taking nothing of the Gentiles. He's talking about the brethren, that they are also Christians. And therefore, instead of them going around in the street and begging, they didn't do that. But they came among the brethren. The emphasis I want to lay on is the helping hand of all men in your life, if God give you grace. So in verse 8, we continue and said, We therefore ought, it's a march, to receive such people, strangers among the brethren, that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. Any man, any woman giving his life to Christ and believe in the truth of God's word, we are commanded by God to receive people of weakness and when we have the capability, we must help them to fulfill their mandate. It's for all men on earth. So before a husband can become a husband, he was a brother. Before a wife can become, become a wife, he was a sister. So when he was a sister, he was a brother, we are able to help them all together. Why is it now that he is a husband, you can't help him? Why is it that now that he is a wife, you can't help him? Because when he was a, an, an ordinary brother and you have money and he comes to you, the Bible tells us that you must help him. If it's an ordinary brother, he has lost his job. And he said, oh, sister, hmm, this time, Gary is very difficult. To, you might put your hand in your pocket and help him. But that brother now is your husband. But before he became a husband, he is your brother. So let's put the husband aside and let us now look at the brother-sister relationship at home and help him solve the problem. Amen. It's biblical. We are supposed to receive such and so that we become fellow helpers. Brother is this, sister is this, brother is this, sister is this, and the church is this. And we are helping God to fulfill his will because of truth. We didn't know the brother, we didn't know the sister, but because of truth we have become together. Till now we are husband and wife because of the truth. And for the truth's sake, we must help one another. Amen. Right now, the law governs all of us to do good. How much more is within the marital sector? Genesis chapter 2 verse 20. It is God himself who said, And Adam gave names to all cattle and, in, and to the fowls of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet. So now the creation of Eve to become a wife is to fulfill the help situation the man will go in tomorrow. When we say a help meet, I want to lift this. I cannot lift it alone. So come and help me. So womanhood or wife in the husband house, you are there for helping the man. That's why God created. He said, Adam gave names to everything, but he didn't have a help meet for him. The woman was not there. And I'm saying that the mindset of God creating the woman for Adam was for the woman to help Adam rule his garden and his world. So now that you are a wife and the mindset was that you are supposed to come and help your husband, now that your husband is in help, you say no. It's unscriptural. And Three more poor one young who pondim, they say, Bra, never one. 
said there was no found a help meet for him. So if there was no found a help for him, and I'm going to find a wife for him, the wife is supposed to come and fulfill the helping needs of the man. Amen. That's what God taught. That's what a wife finds. When you find a wife and you obtain favor from the Lord, it's because you are taking care of her, and tomorrow he will also take care of you. For two is better than one. Amen. This is scripture. So it is not scriptural for a wife who is supposed to help, especially now that you are in a position to deny the help of your husband, and that if he was an ordinary church member, excuse me to say, a brother, you could have helped him. But now the church member has become your husband. So you are bound by scripture to be a fellow helper Amen. of your own husband. So when God found that, that there was no help from Adam, he, he, he implemented it. So the selecting of a rib of Adam flesh and God multiplied it and molded it as a woman was to come and give Adam help. Genesis 2 verse 18. That is the practical implementation of what he did. And the Lord God said, sorry. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I, God, will make him a help meet for him. So the rape that God took and went to other portions when Adam was asleep and was molding the woman in the mindset of God and molding help for Adam. I'm molding help for Adam. She was going to help Adam. She's going to help her because I have decided I will give Adam help. So any time a woman finds a husband and any time a woman, a man finds a wife, we have to realize that there is supposed to be a relationship whereby we can depend on each other. So it must not come to a point where a man is needing help, where the woman is needing help, then the spouses will not do it. It is not according to God's will, for it is the mindset of the ancient of days that the woman who comes into the house to become a wife will be a helper to the man. So you have to come to a conclusion and realize that if by the mercies of God your wife has something in his hands that can help you, doesn't make you the man lazy. I've told you it is not in the DNA of a woman to take care of the house principally. They are just supposed to be a help mate. So three months you have lost your job. It doesn't mean that you'll be, down, you'll be lying down forever. You must wake up and go and find a job. You must ab- obtain your principal responsibility so that the woman, by the grace of God, will continue to help when there is time of need. Amen. So that brother or that sister that you wrote the question, return and help your husband until your husband rise back on his feet and when your husband has risen back on his feet you must continue to ask the husband what can i do to help at home amen so that you don't chop your salary on brazier and nail shine shall we bow our head thank you everlasting father we thank you for your word and we pray that all that you have told us we will put it into our marital plans amen For when you came and you gave Eve to Adam and you pronounced the man and wife, Master Lord Jesus Christ, you said you have brought a help to the man. Yes, Lord. I pray for all married couples around the world that they will look at this portion and be a help to each other. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen.